Way too much time spent studying grammar rules and completing exercises, worrying about every single grammar mistake you make, translating word by word and then struggling to speak naturally, memorizing list of words and passively watching videos and then not knowing why someone's speaking skills aren't improving. People back in the 1960s, 70s, 80s actually believed that there should be a lot of focus on grammar. So they spent a lot of their time translating sentences word by word, randomly repeating sentences, memorizing list of words, and unfortunately after talking to a lot of students who are coming to my DMs on TikTok, I have to say this is the way English is taught in so many schools around the world. If you want to focus on improving your fluency, these are all ineffective, old school, traditional ways of learning a language. The world has moved on since the 1980s. The question is, have you? And what's even more shocking to me is that adults who have graduated from school years or sometimes decades ago still study English like it was a collection of information, like a subject to study, and not a skill that we get better at by taking consistent action over time. And that's the exact reason so many struggling English students struggle to construct sentences and communicate with confidence. I've always been interested in not just the learning languages but also learning about how languages are naturally learned among humans. So I've been doing a lot of research into neuroscience, you know, the science of the brain, the science of learning, cognitive sciences, and also the science of language acquisition, the way humans naturally acquire, absorb the language and then learn to communicate better. So in this video I'm going to talk to you about three ways you might be sabotaging your own English learning and three more innovative ways or alternatives that you could use to improve your English fluency and why if your focus is on learning to communicate in English effectively, focusing on learning English as a skill rather than studying English as a subject is the best thing you can do if you want to see your fluency skyrocket in the next couple of years. Hey English owner, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're a returning visitor, then welcome back. My name is Chubby, I'm an English fluency learning and language anxiety coach and this is a channel for serious English learners who want to learn how to make vocabulary more memorable and how to speak English more freely confidently and comfortably with the help of improving their listening and spoken communication skills. So if these are topics you're interested in and you'd like to find out more about the exact strategies I was using as a Hungarian native speaker to improve my fluency and gain confidence in speaking English, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you can get my weekly updates on everything around listening, speaking and vocabulary. Now I keep kicking myself because I wasted so much of my time studying grammar rules, completing exercises. I studied so much grammar, I spent half of the money I was earning from the part-time job I was doing back in my high school years on grammar books. And yes, I did pass all my exams with flying colours. I even got maximum score in my use of English section of the Cambridge proficiency exam that I took back in London. My spoken grammar had a lot of gaps even after years of practicing with grammar exercises. I kept hesitating, looking for the perfect word to use. I was always stuck. I didn't know how to put a sentence together and I wasn't comfortable with constructing sentences that were grammatically correct and at the same time other people would understand and would be patient enough to let me finish my sentences. And learning English grammar was especially challenging for me as a Hungarian native speaker because we don't even have the concept of prepositions in Hungarian and we only have two tenses, present and past, and we talk about the future using the present instead of all the 12 main tenses in English. So luckily, early enough, I realized what I've been sharing with you on my channel, what I've been working on, helping my students with, shifting away from this student mindset into a responsible adult learner mindset. Because all I did back when I was about 16 or 17 was collecting information, studying all the rules, being aware when to use the past simple and the present perfect. But here's where I made the mistake. And this is what I always tell my students, Learning is context specific, meaning what you practice, you get better at in the context you practice it in. Which means if you practice completing grammar exercises, the way your grammar is going to improve is you're going to be better at 
completing grammar exercises. You might not have problems remembering grammar rules theoretically, or when you have time you can actually decide whether you need to use present perfect or past simple in the gap, you won't be able to speak English with pretty good grammar and communicate effectively because you haven't practiced communicating in English in interactions, which is where most struggling English students make these two mistakes. The first one is that grammar needs to be learned in context. This is something many people don't do in school, so it's not your fault if you haven't done this before. But if we don't have a context, like what are we supposed to use this grammar about, we won't be able to remember it so well. We are always thinking in meaning. When I'm about to tell you a story, I'm not going to say, oh, right now I'm speaking to Carmen and I'm gonna have to use past perfect to tell you a story. That's not how humans think. We think in meanings. Things like, yes, I'm telling a story now and I'm going to tell you something that happened before what I was actually talking about. My students inside the Proficiency Fortress, no matter their level, are able to remember grammar and are able to communicate more effectively because they've learned grammar from its original context. Let's say we're learning the third conditional, I would have if I had something, with real life examples. So you could think of, let's say, how your life would have panned out if you had made different decisions in the past. Or when we're learning to use the past continuous, remember the focus is not on learning the past continuous, it's about learning to use the past continuous. We focus on storytelling and how we could include something that was happening at a specific point in the past so my students get used to talking about that without even noticing that they have naturally acquired that grammar. And the second big mistake, and I talk about this in this video in more detail, is that students spend way too much time studying the grammar rules. The way I was learning to speak English with really good grammar was spending about 20-30% of the time I was spending learning grammar on rules, what's correct, what's incorrect, and most of the time, 60, 70, 80 percent of the time I spent learning grammar, actually seeing, hearing a lot of examples of how that grammar rule is applied in example sentences, in conversations, having practiced being able to see them without hesitating and looking for the next words, and then having practiced using them in conversations with other people. Think about learning to play football really, really well, which is very similar to reaching high levels, advanced, proficient levels of fluency in English. Is it important to know all the rules? Yes, but people like Isco Alarcón hasn't become an incredible football player because he spent all his time studying the rules of football. He's become a legend because he's consistently practiced outside the stadium. He built up his fitness, which is very similar to when we practice putting sentences and words together as a way to practice speaking. And then he spent a lot of his time playing on the field, interacting with other people while playing football. Many struggling English students hesitate a lot when they speak, they look for the perfect word and they make a ton of mistakes, mostly because they translate from their first language, because they miss this in-between middle stage of what we call the activation stage, and they just expect to speak freely. But just like you can't expect to be able to dance Beyonce's choreography perfectly without having done months and months of practice, how can you expect to communicate effectively using more complex grammar or infrequent vocabulary that you've never used before without the necessary amount of and consistent practice. In this video I'll be sharing with you more about how activation, this practice phase where we're actually practicing putting words together into sentences is so incredibly important and how my students are crushing it with their grammar because we focus on learning grammar from context practicing how we use that grammar and doing all this consistently. This brings me to the second point I wanted to make about this old school, ineffective, traditional way of learning English that doesn't lead to any sort of fluency improvement and reflect on this as well. The power of reviewing and repetition. How often did you used to review vocabulary, grammar or any sort of other communicative sub-skills like how to order food, how to express your opinion, how to reflect or anything else in school and how often do you actively review important language, 
right now as an adult. Because one way to know you're not a struggling English student with this high schooler student mindset is if you understand that knowledge of anything is not a series of boxes. Learning is always a process in the brain. It's not something that we always need to have results in, which is what our society trains us to always look out for. And if you often worry about not understanding everything that you listen to in a podcast, not knowing everything or not understanding everything, understanding that everything is a process when it comes to learning to speak English fluently, that we don't have to look for results all the time, which is basically something society came up with and kind of always wants us to look for, you will save yourself from a lot of unnecessary worrying. You're able to speak fluently about what you have automatized because there are what we call neural pathways in our brain that your brain has connected over consistent practice. These are called synaptic connections and our brain learns through what we pay attention to and what we experience, what we do. Just like you can't expect to swim well by walking in shallow water or by watching other people swim, we can't expect to speak fluently without hesitating all the time if we don't actually practice speaking consistently over time and if we don't pay attention to the way we are speaking. I used to study English in this beautiful high school back in Hungary and you can imagine how many times we looked out of the window and looked at that lake when all we did in class was just studying grammar rules, completing exercises and learning a bunch of words from random lists. But it wasn't just that, it was too rushed. We spent like a week studying comparatives and then we were tested on it immediately. So of course uh, many people, even if they studied a lot, they had trouble remembering how those comparatives work. And then we moved on to studying vocabulary about sports and then we got tested on them as well without the necessary amount of practice. In order for us to speak English with correct grammar or we'll be able to put sentences together without always looking for the words or not struggling with constructing sentences, we need to focus on what we call processing. And this is something traditional ways of teaching or learning English don't really pay a lot of attention to. The way my students learn to speak with better grammar is that first we just look at a lot of examples or we hear a lot of examples of how the grammar structures we are trying to practice look like and how they work in real sentences. But this happens over lessons. So instead of spending a whole hour studying exactly the same grammar structures, we do this over time. Sometimes 20 minutes of looking at a lot of examples in a dialogue or in a situation where the grammar is used often by the characters. And then we spend 10 minutes in another class looking at example sentences or listening to example sentences. And then we move on to the activation phase of learning. And here I mention a couple of examples of the activities we often do with my students that's going to help you get better at using the grammar or the type of vocabulary that you want to get better at communicating with. This is the stage where with my students we focus on higher order learning, not just superficial learning that most people do but actually engaging your brain with activities that help you remember language in the long term. Imagine this as the difference between sowing seeds into concrete or sand compared to sowing seeds into fertile soil. When struggling English students translate word by word, memorize words from random lists, passively watch videos or live streamings on social media and focus way too much on studying grammar rules and completing exercises, they are throwing their seeds into sand and expecting a plant to grow from there. And the reason successful English communicators are able to speak English with good grammar and communicate effectively is because they focus most of their time and effort on looking at and listening to how the grammar structures work and then activating that in those engaging activities. And of course, as they are sowing all those seeds into fertile soil, just like when our brain is really engaged with the language we're learning, there is a good chance a healthy, amazing plant is going to grow. For example, with my intermediate students, we've recently looked at different ways we can talk about possibilities or probability in the future, how likely or unlikely certain things are to happen. And we saw examples like, it's bound to rain heavily tomorrow. 
there's a good chance we'll need to cancel our weekend trip. The dogs are fairly likely to get hungry by noon. My parents are unlikely to get on a plane and visit me. This, after five years of living in Asia, is unfortunately a true story. And I doubt people are going to keep their cities cleaner. If you're looking out for more activities that are going to help you improve your listening skills, expand your vocabulary and teach you how to use better grammar and a wider range of vocabulary when you speak, make sure you check out my free 14 day learning plan that's going to give you a bunch of activities and also a lot of days where you could just take a rest and you don't have to learn too much if you check out the first link in the description below. We're basically slowly moving away from looking at and listening to these examples through practicing putting sentences together so we find it easier to construct sentences, coming up with our own examples, how we could relate the grammar or the vocabulary you're learning to our own life, which is a really effective way for us to remember vocabulary. And then once my students have had enough practice over time and they are more or less familiar with the structures, we actually start using them in more productive activities. And then at the end of the whole process, my students are able to use those grammar structures or the vocabulary we're looking at in free conversations without worrying about what to say next. And of course, if you'd like to see a rapid improvement with your English fluency, your communication skills, your listening skills, have a wider range of vocabulary and grammar when you communicate, the fastest, most effective way for you to get all of this and gain confidence in speaking English, let's not forget the incredible power having interaction with other people has. Many struggling English students avoid having conversations with other people. They either only speak to themselves, record themselves on audio or video, but struggle to speak confidently in real life situations where they do have to use English. Which is why having regular conversations with real people and making sure that you also practice speaking, putting the thoughts that you have into words and then those words into sentences almost every single day, actively seeking opportunities to use the language instead of just observing it on social media, in articles, books and videos, and even practicing the same communicative situations like sharing your opinion or ordering food and keeping those conversations 1% more challenging are responsible for about 70% of your improvement with your fluency and your confidence in speaking English. Remember that you can always start practicing having conversations with other people and speaking, no matter your level, you just need to focus on practicing what you've already learned. Several studies have proven in the last 20 to 30 years that actually having conversations with other people is the fastest, most effective way, the real deal. You can improve your fluency, gain confidence in speaking English, improve your listening, being able to understand fast English speakers, improve your grammar and the range of vocabulary you use at any level. Whether it's a conversation you're practicing about giving directions, ordering in a restaurant, talking about future predictions, asking polite questions, or conversations where you're explaining a process or perhaps you're giving a persuasive presentation. We can always practice having conversations at any level. What we need to do is focus on not expecting to be able to speak English the same way, fluently, freely, without thinking, without hesitating, without any sort of problems, the same way we speak our first language. Because we've had decades of practice speaking our first language, whereas we had very little practice using our second language. Especially if you've done the practice phase where you are getting better at using those expressions and phrases. And this is eventually one of the key components to confidence in speaking English. Part of confidence comes from being able to say a whole sentence or say a phrase without always thinking what preposition should I use or what is the next word to use. And if you've only focused on what school teaches us, which is basically grammar rules, exercises, explanations, information, you haven't automatized the phrases and expressions that you want to say. One way I help my students is that we create a safe space for people to be surrounded by other people from all around the world. We've got currently people from 17 different countries 
who celebrate people for making a tiny bit of effort, even if they have a busy life. They support other people when they are about to give up so they could keep going, they keep fighting and improving their fluency that they will benefit from in the future. And they accept other people, even if they make mistakes or they mispronounce words when they communicate. But my students love practicing inside our community also because we spend so much of our time practicing that activation stage that helps my students construct better sentences together even before they have the opportunity to practice having free conversations with each other. And just like with anything, the more action you take, the more consistent you are with it, the more patient you are with yourself and the more attention you pay to what you want to get better at using, the faster you will build your fluency and communication skills as well. What is your biggest takeaway from this video? Do you still study English the way people back in the 1980s used to study? We've already switched over to learning English like an action taker English learner who's not afraid of making mistakes, who's facing their difficulties, their challenges, because they see them as an essential part of effective learning. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below if you have any questions as well, and can't wait to see you in another video.